for Mr. Stubblefield as the precedent has been set. <laughs> Good morning, Rob. Well, spring has certainly ushered in some interesting, lively discussion this morning. You know, I, I'm getting kind of hungry. Usually by this time, somebody has fed us. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. We so can, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, Pavlov's dog here. Yeah, you've got to be more judicious in who you invite to come in. You think so? That, or make it very clear to them, treats are welcome. Treats, feed the bears. <laughs> Feed, feed Nothing personal, Steve, but... Um, you know, uh, I'm from Jefferson County, and apparently we're out of money, so we have nothing to spare for trees. <laughs> the man's got a point. Let's also welcome in the social assassin, New York Times best-selling author, John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. You know, Melissa Power actually came up with the, the, the radio name I like. She said, I'm the star. She did say she, that twice. She did say that twice. So Double down. I, think, I yeah. think, you know, the star of the show, is it's better than Social Assassin. And well, the star. You did tell me people do recognize you when you walk around That town has now. happened, yes. Yeah, yeah they're calling yes. out to you. Hey, Gilstrap. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but, Johnny Boy. Yes. But, but, they're, they're not they're, recognizing me for my books, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's nice to be recognized for the, for the, yeah. for the radio gig. But too. you do talk at book clubs. I do. I do. Just yeah. this week. Just uh, get in touch with Mr. Gilstrap. At uh, Field Marshal uh, Von Gilstrap yeah. com. <laughs> Actually, if you do, if, seriously, if you go to John Gilstrap dot com, uh, or John at John Gilstrap dot com, or my Field email Marshall. address, I, I enjoy doing book clubs, and I don't care where you are. Also, we'll do it via Zoom. I, I really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. Cool. Do you make them call you the star? Um, you're, 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 you're insisting on that today. I yeah. encourage it. I don't. I don't <laughs> insist. <laughs> you know, it's 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 like in The Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> Suggest, don't yeah. insist. Yeah. yeah. yeah but what, what does impress me is you know that books are still a thing. You know, we have a little bookstore sure. in in Shepherdstown, Four Seasons Books, Lovely. and you know they have book clubs and they have more and more book clubs and i know you've been there and, and you know, you have clubs at the library and all this like fear that you know video and phones are going to you know push books aside the people i see going to these book clubs are young people now granted that's a larger segment of the population for me now you know but i'm talking you know in their 30s and 40s so it it's a thing it's still alive and what's nice bookstores like four seasons which has a lot of personality it, it's a it's a cool little bookstore what we're missing, what's going away from certainly from my youth, you couldn't go anywhere and not have those spinning racks of books. It's just harder and harder to find books to buy. You have to go to bookstores to find them now. Mm, yeah, yeah. Good luck getting a book at an airport. Right? right. Yeah. Steve Pearson is our guest, publisher of the Independent Observer in Jefferson County. Steve, good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome. Great to have you back. It's been a little while. It it, it has, and uh, it seems like the only time you have me on here is when there's a problem over in Jefferson County. Well, that's all the time. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's it's getting harder and harder <laughs> to find the time when that's not. Well, you know, when they weren't meeting, you know, there weren't really anything to talk about. But now, well, when they weren't meeting, there was a lot to talk about, <laughs> yeah, but not to do. That's the truth. So they did uh, meet yesterday in regards to a budget for Jefferson County. Right. Well, actually, um, this that was the third of three budget meetings. So they started. Um, Last week, you know, a couple meetings, and then they had a, a final one. Well, not a final one, but there's going to be a public hearing on, on Thursday, tomorrow. But, um, you know, just to put this in, in context, um, you know, it's, it's about a $34 million budget. And, you know, the, the, the goal that the commission set was to keep the budget pretty, pretty level from, from, from last year. But um, the, the, the challenge they've had, uh, and this goes back uh, almost two years, is... They don't have a finance director. And um, just if you recall, when they were going through the ambulance transition, uh, there was a lot of animosity. Um, you know, the finance director was left. Well, let's just leave it at that. Um, then came back because they realized they really needed a finance director to finish the budget and then left again. And then there was a gap. And then there was a changeover at the county administrator. And new, new administrator, they brought in a, a, someone to fill the role of, of finance director. Um, they actually brought in two people. They brought in one person who was, who was there for maybe a day uh, and left. Um, and then, you know, the next person came in. Um, county administrator left because, you know, he, he referenced the toxic work environment. Um, the person who was rolling, the, the, doing the 2024 budget, the current year budget, you know, about a year ago, she left the week before the budget was supposed to be submitted to the state. And then there was a gap. And another county administrator came in, and then they hired a budget um, budget director, not a finance director. Uh, you know, later earlier later in 2023. So you've had these big, lots of turnover, big gaps, 
And what's apparent is uh, somewhere along the line, a lot of information got lost. You know, there's, there's no continuity here, so that sort of, you know, experience is gone. And even the where did you put the files or the recipe book is gone. Uh, oh so uh, they didn't even have, I found out later, they didn't even have a copy of their current budget for this year when, when they started. Nothing on paper, no computer file. No, they, 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 they had to call up the state and say, could you please send us a copy of our budget? Because what, what's happened over the last two weeks is we go into a meeting, we get a set of numbers. And I say we, I mean, you know, the audience and the commission, because we're all getting this at the same time. And then the next meeting, it's a different set of numbers. And, you know, when you're budgeting you know, $34 million, you, you kind of want to have confidence at, at, at the numbers. And it's been bouncing around. And so, like, on, on, to, to give you an example where this is on, on last Tuesday, this is the 12th, um, the staff came in. And, and, and I want to point out, you know, the staff is doing the best they can with the information they have and the resources they have. And this is really on the commission. The commission had several choices. You know, they discussed, hey, should we hire a finance director? And they didn't do anything. They said, no, nah, we'll just, we, we, we can make do. You know, this, this, the staff can, can do this for us. And then they keep saying, well, the staff, you need to do this for us. And so uh, they came in on Tuesday and said, well, based on the numbers we have, it looks like there's a $4.8 million deficit in the current year. And so, you know, uh, The current year that they're spending money from. Right. You know, it, that ends this June. Deficit meaning spending $4 million more than they have? Well, unclear what, what a deficit means in this okay. context, but that they had to replenish funds, that they had not made provisions for funds that needed to be put into certain places. So $4.8 is a pretty big number, especially in thir out of $34 million. So the, Thursday, the, the Tuesday meeting on the 12th ended pretty quickly because they said, well, you know, we need to call on the state auditor. Maybe they should look at our books, and maybe we can get an extension because there's no way we're going to get this done because – if we're almost $5 million in the hole this year, how can we budget for next year? Um, now, excuse me. This is the second year in a row they've had to ask for an extension because they cannot submit their budget on time. Well, they didn't ask for the extension last year. They just sort of snuck it in okay. late. Yeah. Um, and, and the state, you know, I, call, I talk to the state. That that's not something that happens. You know, this is not a normal thing, you know, submitting a budget late. I mean, because... The deadlines are set well in advance. You know it's coming. It's like New Year's Eve. You, know, you, you don't forget when New Year's Eve is. <laughs> and um, so the, third, the Tuesday meeting ended early, uh, and then there was the little you know, kerfuffle with the state trooper and arresting the two of the commissioners for, you know, to, for their arraignment. Um, but that's a topic for another you know, show, I'm sure. So they came back on Thursday, and they, the staff had had a conversation with the state auditor, and the state auditor said, well, your, your budget looks fine to us, we're not coming down to help you out. Turn it in on time and, and get it done. So at that point, they were like, okay, well, we need to cut, you know, because we, we're, we're in, in crisis. You know, we, we got we to gotta tr trim our belts. Um, and they handed out, you know, I don't know if you can all see this. Yeah. It doesn't show well. 18 pages, it's about a thousand page individual lines of. of you know, numbers on there. Excuse me, Steve, yeah. for a clarification. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about now they got to cut the current budget. No, no, they're talking about the next year's budget. The next they, year's budget, they, okay. They just sort of skipped right over what, what's happening this year. They went right into next year because okay. that's what's due. So no discussion of priorities, no discussion of what we need to do. They just like, okay, we got to cut. So literally it's like, the, you know, the contractor shows up and says, all right, I'm just going to start knocking things out and pulling things out and dumping tools in the yard and no plans, no schedule, just like boom, boom, boom. And they're cutting right and left. And the thing that really stood out at me is it, they were about half an hour into the meeting and it, uh, one of the staff said, oh, and by the way, I just want to let you know, there's, we took out all the COLA and merit increases in this budget. And not one of the commissioners even paused, flagged, said, oh, that, that's a concern. They just, just kept right on going. You know, so, I mean, and, and to me, you know, when you, when, you, when you look at these budgets, I mean, it's about staff, right? And, and giving them the tools to do their job. And they just said, yeah, no, no increases, forget it. And they just kept cutting and cutting. And they spent like three and a half hours doing this. And by the time they got to lunch, they were kind of tired. And they said, we need to take a break because we're working off of these, this paper copy, which the audience didn't have. All we had was we were just watching what was going on on the screen. So we're trying to 
watch a horse race, you know, with a thousand horses in it. Mm -hmm. you know, all, who's on? Who's ahead? Who's behind? They were cutting stuff. They were adding stuff in. And they came back after lunch with an updated number, and they were still seven hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars in the red for the next year, for twenty twenty-five, even after doing all these cuts and, and, and adjustments. And by that time, they'd given us in the audience, and there were a couple reporters in the audience and some citizens, you know, a paper copy so we could at least follow along and, and see what these numbers were. Because on the screen, you got a thousand lines, and you're only seeing like you know a couple dozen at a time. And I'm looking at these numbers, and I'm looking at the, you know, because I've been following the budgets for a couple of years, and look back, you know, it's like this doesn't make sense. I mean, Jefferson County's growing. I don't know if you've seen the, the news reports, right? Sure. I mean, Berkeley's growing, even Morgan's growing. Um, you know, you look at the, the building permits. I mean, they're they're raking in money at the building department. Um, so the revenues are up. And when I look at the numbers for 2024. I'm seeing they're under budget in all these departments. So I don't know where this $4.8 million deficit was coming from. It wasn't coming from the operating side. It was something to do with the, the transfers. It's like if your revenues are up and your expenses are down. How, how do you have a deficit? How do you have a deficit? And then how in, in next year they're still growing. How are you needing to cut you know, uh, you know, almost a million dollars to you know, make it balance? So I'm looking back at my notes, looking at my numbers, and, and I was sitting next to Jackie Shadel, the clerk, and I'm looking at their numbers, and it's like, they're missing numbers here. And, you know, I looked at it, and it's like, well, you know, they forgot to put in about a million dollars of revenue in, in, in this 18 pages or 19 pages of, of things. So I'm pointing this out to Jackie, and she raises her hand and says, well, you know, I, I think this guy here might have some information that might be of interest to you. So. Mr. Stolfer says, well, if Mr. Pearson well, has something to say, he can come up here and say it. So I went up there, like to the microphone, and I said, well, I'm looking at this, and I see this, this, and this, and there's like this silence. Like, and they got the accountant on the phone, and it's just silence. You know, and then they start, long story short, it's like, yeah, that's probably right. We should put that money in there. <laughs> <laughs> so they put the million dollars in there, and all of a sudden they went from you know almost an eight hundred thousand dollar deficit to about a two hundred thousand dollar surplus. You know, and at that point, you're, again, because they were still sort of in this mindset, you know. So one of the commissioners asked, I don't remember who it was. Um, well, okay, what else do we need to cut? I said, oh, no, no, uh, we're we're in surplus now. So they decided to take a break. <laughs> you know, and it's like we're going to stop here and then redo the numbers. So they come back in uh, on, on Thursday, uh, uh, this, this was Tuesday, the 19th, and after the, I guess it was Monday, I, I'd, sent, I'd done some more research on the numbers, and I said, I think you're missing some more numbers. You forgot to put in your ARPA funding, because you, know, you got $11.5 million in ARPA funding. You hadn't spent it all. I mean, you, you, you allocated it over two or three years, but, but you didn't put that into the 25-year budget. So that's another 600000 you should put into the budget. So by the time they got to Tuesday, they had offered you to the job of financial manager. <laughs> um, you know, I don't. Again, I wouldn't want to work for these guys. Um, but they also reported somewhere between last Tuesday and this Tuesday that now the current year budget, the one that was in four point eight million dollars in deficit, was now two point six million dollars in surplus. From these numbers you found? No, no. This was, they went back and looked at, I was just looking at next year's numbers. They looked at this year's numbers. Why would the state auditor's office say they didn't, their numbers are okay, they do not have to have a full scale audit? Because their numbers are fine. They just, they're not, the, the records they have in the county, because they didn't have fin a finance director, that they may be there, but no one knows where they are. They're incomplete. Disarray, right? Yeah. It's, it's like you know when when you you come home, you just like you stack your papers there and you put them in the sort of the closet. You're going to pick them up later, and you know if you leave, they're just going to sit there. Yeah. So they've effectively they, they forgot to write a few paychecks into the register where they received money. A lot of this has to do with transfers. You know, mm -hmm. it's not you know when when you're writing your checkbook, that's easy to track. But you know, as you know, with you know state but you know and, and county you know budgets, you've got you know coal funds and you've got oil and gas funds, you've got lottery month funds, you've got ARPA funds, you've got grant funds. So you have several dozen different funds. Well, Steve, in in this case where you didn't have a finance director, who had been filling that role? Well, or how many people had been filling the role? I would say it's it's been about five or six different people 
have had their hands on the budget and, and over, note, the by, last, over the last two years. We're going to have Pasha Majdi, who's a uh, recently appointed member of the mm -hmm. Jefferson County Commission, on the program tomorrow. We'll get further into this as to whose hands were in what pie, and I'm not sure how much Pasha will know as the newest and, member. It, it, you know, and I haven't seen any evidence, you know, this is not, there's, there's no money missing in, in the sense that someone, you know, took it and spent yeah, it. This on, isn't criminal. No, no, this is really, it, it's a complex uh set of accounts and and budgets and moving money from one you know to pay a bill i mean and if you take a shortcut you've you've lost your paper trail and you don't know how to account for it but steve this is not unique to this year or to this county this is the common practice for all county commissions and so the excuse of just they did not know they had this or they did not have records rings shallow to me yeah. And I, and I, in, in, in the sense that, in the sense that this should not have happened. Well, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. I, I think the issue here is, um, you know, Jefferson, I don't know what Berkeley County's budget is, but I'm 53 sure. 53. 52.3. So or something like I would that. think, you know, Berkeley, Jefferson, we're, our budgets are, are, are larger than most counties in, in the state. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you look back, I mean, you can go back a few years, you know, the budgets are in the $20 million range. So, Jefferson County is growing. The budgets are growing. You know, the staff is growing. Um, it becomes more complex to to manage. You throw in this ARPA uh, funding, uh, you know, eleven million dollars into a, a a place like Jefferson County, and you're tracking two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand, you know, a million, you know, of it in, in different buckets. You got to land the planes, and it takes an air traffic controller to land the planes, and they decided we don't need that. We'll just let you know, you know, just let them land where they may, and that's the problem. Does Jefferson County have an administrator, like a county administrator? An interim, an interim, because again, so the, the, the county administrator position is vacant, filled by an interim now. The deputy position is vacant, not filled. Uh, finance director position is vacant. And again, the county commission actually, they solicited uh, resumes for those two positions, the uh, director and, and uh, administrator and, and deputy, but haven't had any interviews yet. So again, this is a management failure on the part of the county commission. How much they of this is fallout staff. from from the the dead sessions of of the Krause and Jackson? Yeah, um, they had time to notice these positions. Uh, you know, once they appointed the you know Commissioner Majdi, uh, you know they they again they made a decision you know that, you know to, to recruit for the administrator positions, but they deferred any decision on the finance director because. They wanted to get the county administrator in first. You know, I mean, that is a logical thing to do, but they have not moved forward on putting in a permanent administrator. You mentioned earlier that during some of the cutting, they took the COLA's cost of living increase away yeah. from the staff. Yeah. That is well, one they, of the, they didn't include them. Yeah. Okay, but that's one of the basic agreements that any office has with their with their employees that they would keep up with inflation. Absolutely. What message does that send well, as they're trying to recruit? I. You know, the, and several of the commissioners, at, you know, on the Thursday, you know, Thursday session, you know, mentioned this, and they're going to come back in tomorrow, and that is one of the topics of conversation is how they can include a cola and uh, and, and merit increase. But uh, it sounds a terrible message. You know, all the jurisdictions around are in, in increasing. Not you've got inflation that's been up. I mean, I I just go into some of the offices after this, and and I hear that. You know, and, and it's not like the people who are working for the county don't know what's going on. I mean, word gets around, and I, I guarantee you that everybody who works for the county knows that the commission has said, you know, has taken, you know, pay increases off the, you know, for COLA and, and Merit off the table for, so far. Um, so, and one of the reasons that the current year budget is in surplus, because they haven't been able to fill positions. They've got vacancies. They've got vacancies in the sheriff's office. They've got vacancies in, in public safety. They've got vacancies in the ambulances because they haven't been able to attract uh, people. Unfilled, va Unfilled un positions. They count as surplus. They don't count as... Well, they didn't spend the money. They, they budgeted to have... If, you, if your department was budgeted for, say, 20 people and you can only fill 12 of those slots... At the end of the year, you've got salary that you were budgeted that you didn't use. So, isn't that unusual? Don't you normally count that as? as I mean, it, no, same thing's happening in the state. That's right. So it happens everywhere. It's not unusual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, Steve, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. So after once the the found money was found and then reinstored to the re, uh, restored to the budget, were the draconian cuts that you endured over all those hours restored? Yes. Okay. So so they went back, um, but they again they they didn't put the cola in. I mean that wasn't again go back. There was no setting of priorities at the beginning of this process. So when they found that they had more money, the first thing they didn't they did was they just put back cuts kind of like an order as opposed to like, okay, what's the most important thing to do? Um, some things they didn't include this year. They didn't include any funding for the uh, Jefferson County Community Ministries because in last year's budget that had come out of ARPA. So right now that's sitting at, at zero. What's the usual number for that, Keith? Well, uh, I'm sorry, I called you Keith, like right, Keith Lowry. Keith, Keith yeah. Lowry, We right. just had Keith on last week. Well, you can ask him uh, because it's a, it's a moving target because a lot of their stuff is, is grants, you know, matching funds. And, you know, he's uh, right now he's trying to get most of his funding, you know, from, from grants and external sources. So not rely on the county, but I, I don't know that they were expecting to get zeroed out uh, this year. Um, in Parks and Recs, they decided, well, since the hotel motel tax is increasing, we don't need to give them any increase. So we're not going to line item fund the fireworks or the, the scholarships for camps. So, um, so no fireworks uh, in the Jefferson County budget again this year. Uh, after they said they were going to include it, so. Uh, also, I think I read somewhere that they are uh, utilizing some money from tracks uh, from the uh, the track in Jefferson County. Uh, that they uh, they normally have kept that off limits because it's so unpredictable. It's no assured source of income. But they're changing their mind this year. Well, what, no, what they what they were trying to do. So you got lottery, video lottery, and you got table games. They before they started this process, they said, let's take the table games and put it over on the capital side because it is, you know, we're worried that it's going to go away. Um, they put that back in, you know, once they realized, you know, when they were thinking they were in the hole. So they, that's still in there for now, uh, but they still want to take that out. Did any of this affect the school funding? Uh, it's a totally separate budget. Yeah, schools are, schools are a totally separate process that um, I haven't even looked at. Okay. Yeah. So... <sighs> Are they actively trying to find then a, a county administrator and a finance director in terms of employing a recruiter and interviewing uh, I, people? They have they have received resumes. They posted the positions. They received the resumes. They got the resumes back in January and February, um, and but they have not put it on the agenda to interview them, those candidates. They say the buck stops here, and you go to the lead desk, which would be Steve Stolifer, who's the commission president. Well, there's five of them. I mean, you know, There yes, are five, yeah. Yeah. And, and Steve is the one who's voted a, a, as president. So was the commissioner distraction? I know you mentioned that this kind of predates that some, but was the commissioner distraction all part of this and the reasons why we don't have someone who's in charge of running the money? I, I can say that the commission has spent a lot of energy on things other than the budget this this entire year starting back in january you know the, the last the, the budget we're currently in um you know they have been focused on other things and then they haven't been meeting in, in the fall so yeah i think it, you can't you can't escape that that there's been just a lot of chaos and turmoil at that front table amongst those five commissioners and they haven't seem to work well together either. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, came up at the, you know, the, the, um, the two meetings ago, the uh, Mike Sign, who's the, uh, the director of the ambulance service, you know, they had asked him to like, tell us what we need for ambulances. And he gave them a very detailed, you know, here's heat maps, here's where our calls are, here's where our underserved areas are. My first priority would to put, you know, 24 hour staffing back in Middleway. And then, you know, he had, he had a list. And he put those requests in his budget. And Jane Tab, you know, Commissioner Jane Tab, said, well, you know, what is it going to take to make the ambulance service self-sufficient? Because in, in Berkeley, I think your ambulance fee is, what, about 160 a year? So bill, do you pay that bill or does Bonnie? Bonnie pays it. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I don't think it's quite that high, Steve, but I don't exactly know what but, it is. Well, in Jefferson, it's 45. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's low. And, you know, if they put it up to about the level of where Berkeley is, the ambulance service would be self-sufficient, self-funding <laughs> between the billings and, 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 and the fees. But, you know, Jane's, you know, Commissioner Tapp has raised this a, a couple of times, and, and, and on Thursday she raised this. And, you know, being on the commission is like volleyball, right? You need a second, you know, so someone, another commissioner needs to take something up. And once you have two commissioners that want to talk about something, you got to talk about it. She just keeps raising this, and none of the other commissioners are picking up on it. They're, they're, nobody's taking this. So they're not answering 
the questions, not addressing the questions that need to be asked. Like how we, we, we took on this ambulance service a year and a half ago. How are we going to pay for it? Cricket. Do they say why they don't want to address it? They just don't take any action. You know, you've been to your know, meetings. You know, I, I make a motion, and if nobody else seconds your motion, you don't discuss it. That's Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what I'm saying is the commission seems to have no problem focusing what? on issues that they want to focus on. But What are they focusing on? What are, what are the priorities from your observation? I couldn't tell you. I mean, there's no clear, you know, usually you go into an organization, you know, you see a mission statement, you, you, you go to the beginning of a year, you get like, a, here's our you know, strategic plan for the year, here's our goals, you know, maybe you go on a retreat. No, nothing. I, I think uh, because of what's happened recently, and really you could, you could go back to Rockwool and maybe start from there and go forward to the boycotts from the two commissioners and state that if you're a member of that commission, you're probably a little bit more reserved than most because you're not sure who your friends are or you're very sure who they aren't yeah. on the commission. And Jefferson, you know, Bill, you got to build a coalition on a commission. You do. And Jefferson County has, as long as I can remember, have had problems in their 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 future, the direction they want to go. Even back in the glory days of Greg Corliss and Rusty Morgan, who I thought was two of the Prince individuals, there was a lot of difficulty in getting an agreement on anything. It's this mindset of keeping the county the way it was in my grandpappy's day or looking ahead. And this division is is deep and real in Jefferson County. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right, Bill. I mean, there is a, a strong sentiment that, you know, we need to grow some people because we want to have good jobs. We want to, you know, build up a, 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 a commercial base. And you have a strong sentiment, but but we want to keep the rural character. And you know what does the rural character mean? And you know, people don't even agree with that. I mean, yeah. you'll have people. Well, we want to keep the farms. Well, you know, we want to keep the farmers. Well, but the farmers don't necessarily want to farm anymore. Um, you know, not because they're they're older, they're retired. They want they want to you know. And the move kids on. don't want to do it, or they don't want to, or it's just not economically feasible. I, you know, I was talking. You know, back in the seventies, there were 60, 70 dairies. In Jefferson County, you know, you're not going to find a dairy in Jefferson County now because, you know, you could have a, a herd of 300 cows and that was fine. Now you need 3,000 or you know 10,000, you know, to make it economic, and you can't fit that. Big milk anywhere. has taken over, baby. Yeah, big milk. Yeah. Hey, Steve, we're out of time. All right. When's the next edition of the paper come out? Uh, we're at uh, April first. April first. Uh, Observerwv.com. Uh, we're starting up our e email newsletter too because you know there's just too much news to put in the paper, and the paper's too expensive. You know, paper costs a lot. Yeah, so we can't keep yeah. expanding the paper. You know, but but we can. Electrons are cheap. Hey, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.